accord. Hey, online people, um, not Jackson, Kai, and Lucy and Prudence, but and people Christian. who are e -learn and Christian now. E-learners, thank you, Cora. Y'all should stream this. The link's in the Microsoft Teams, like, the main notebook. Y'all should join us at, uh, what, like around 9.45, 9.40 every day, Monday through Friday. Friday might be a little different. Friday it would be at, uh, it'd be at 10 o'clock. But Monday through Thursday, it'll around 9.45. Y'all should hop in here. Anyway, so number five, we know Veritas is the subject. Um, and then notes. We see notes. Do we have any idea what notes might be anyone? It could be nominative here. It must not be. We already have a subject. So it must be anyone? Is the first person plural pronoun? It means, what does it mean? It doesn't mean I or me. It means because plural, it means... But so it's, yeah, it's going to be us here. So in other time, uh, other sentences, it's like we, it's the nominative. But we already know what our subject is. We know Veritas is the subject. So nos must be a direct object. It must be us. Us is the object form of we. What, Sarah? Tuesdays, 1.5 video, not today's video. I've already uploaded it because I'm a good teacher and I'm on top of things. We need to upload Tuesday's video. Just take a deep breath. We gotta, we're, we're over here doing things, okay? We're actually learning. You're over there learning from a computer. No, for real though. We like, this is bad. Okay. On my kids, usually we're starting earlier and this doesn't happen. So, what? Yeah? Yeah. So, but the truth, what's our verb? What is the truth going to do? Anyone, Parker? Will say. Yeah, but the, the truth, well, it looks like, if anything, maybe everything after this verb is like maybe a relative clause or something. We don't have a comma. But the fact that I see a quo after a verb, I think that's like, this is all extra stuff. Let's mess with that at the end. So, but the truth will liberate or will free, what? What's our direct object? If y'all don't know that nos means we or us, and in this case us, you need to write that down in your notes. You have to. Y'all really need to be aggressive and proactive about um, taking the rust off. Uh, y'all had a long summer. Latin's about to get scary hard. Y'all really need to, like, be writing down every word that you come across that you don't know. I don't know if we're going to do the vocab refresher sheets this year because, like, y'all can do that on your own. You should do it on your own. I don't know why you wouldn't. It's what I did when I was learning Latin because I was overwhelmed with how many words I didn't know that I'd come across. So the way you kind of calm yourself down when you think about how many words you don't know is you just write it down somewhere and they're in your notes even if you never look at it again at least you're taking a moment to write it that sometimes links it to the uh, uh the part of your brain that um, is responsible for memorization so but the truth future tense will free what is this us but the truth will set us or liberate us what what is metugrawi are those going together I think they are, which is weird. They almost look like they're not, but I think they're both what case, Phoenix? Um, they're not accusative. Oh, that what? Ablative. ablative. Yes. So they're ablative. What kind of ablative? Anyone? Not means. Think of what we talked about. We saw it over and over again yesterday, Parker. Separation. Because Separation. the truth will free us from what kind of fear? Hmm. Serious? Yeah, like grave or serious or weighty fear. Probably grave or weighty or serious. So I, either of those are fine. Uh, Chicken Boy is telling us Metis is from Metis Metus. So this is a fourth declension noun. So in the ablative, it's just a long U, right? We know that ablatives like just like single vowel endings. So, but the truth will liberate us now from, we're adding the from ourselves just because we know that a verb like we barrow is going to have an applet of a substitution, right? We don't need X, J, or uh, 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 what's the other from? 
You don't need X or J. Um, we're, we're just going to have like the context to know that this is alpha that's separating. So that's not too bad, right? Y'all should have got close to that, honestly, even with or without being rusty in terms of the vocabulary. Because uh, the grammar there is actually fine. And we practice ablative separation a lot this year. So, but truth will, will free us from grape here now. And then it looks like Quo might, I'm going to move now around because I think we're going to learn more about this fear. As in, I think Quo is a relative pronoun that its antecedent is going to be that fear. I think we're, this is going to tell us more about the fear. I just have a feeling. And then, oh my gosh. Our verb is terity sumus. Whoa, okay. Who can tell me about this verb? What tense, voice, and everything, person and number, is this verb? Anyone? Whip out that verb sheet. So since it's in two parts, that tells us one clue. We already know that it's not active. It's going to be passive. And what tense is it? It's not going to be present passive, future passive, or imperfect passive because those are still just one word it's only when it's what kind of passive where it's in two chunks it's going to be perfect passive this is going to be a perfect passive verb there it's very difficult to get used to these but we're going to do it and we just need to focus on them to be able to do that so kate make sure you're turned around and not distracting Luke. maybe you weren't distracting Luke, but uh, so but truth will free us from great fear now and the quo is ablative so when we have a passive verb, we often have an ablative of agent or ablative of means. And that'll be the thing that's responsible for the verb. It's like doing the verb to the subject. Uh, and so I'm going to say, how should we translate quo? Anyone? We're going to add a, a word that starts with a B. Luke, Ben? No? Good guess. That, that, that'll come, ben will show up. B E E N. Um, so like by which, so truth will set us free, uh, from the great fear by which, what, what person is Sumas? First, second, or third person, Cora? Sumas. Uh, this, this is what's going to tell us what the person and number is. That's third person. No, that's not third person. Sorry. I know you know it. Uh, first person? Yes. Yeah. Some people still want to say, uh, third because they're thinking of like a lot of people, but it's first person, <laughs> singular, plural. Uh, plural. Right. So it's going to be a we kind of thing, right? Yeah. So by which we, what? Where, what does Tara T mean? Tara T is, is echoing the fact that we have a plural subject in we because it long, ends in long I. So by which we, what? We, perfect passive. You can literally look at your verb chart and see how we translate this. Lucy's about to find it. Parker, maybe I found it. Phoenix, what do you think? We have been... Terrified. Yes, we have been terrified. D was just like for a long time. Okay, so that might seem like that was a lot of intense grammar coming at you real quick, but really it was actually pretty straightforward once we figured out that we had a perfect passive verb. It's just that you guys first learned perfect passive during April where everything was online, so it was hard to learn it, and we reviewed it last week, so it's still very fresh, um, and that's what makes it difficult, but I know you guys can get the hang of that. It's not as bad as it might look. Um, if anything, quo is the weirdest part. Just knowing, so, let's see. Why did I say from? Let me fix that. I wouldn't say from there. Sorry. Yep, if you have an ablative, you should just expect that you might add the preposition by to it because we have so many ablatives that use by now, whether it's an ablative of means or ablative of agent. So the same thing, it's just an agent describes a person. And at least with the agent, though, they do give us the off or off that literally means by. But with ablative of means, they don't. So it's just going to be floating there, and we just need to know to add by ourselves. And that is pretty hard. Any questions on this one? So even though no one off the translation, do y'all think y'all understand it now? All right. Okay. Who can read number six in Latin? Jaden, you get this one? <clears throat> number six. Who's going to read number six? Uh, thank you, Bailey. Yeah, yeah. Kiwi tossed a lay tie erunt. Okay, it looks like we have another passive verb at the end there. And now we're more used to, to translating, so it won't be as scary. 
Quibus, though, Quibus is kind of weird. Just like, how, how might we translate Quibus in a vacuum when we first see it? Think of Quo that we saw last time. We see Quibus, we might immediately think what? Carly? Maybe what? Yeah, maybe what? Is there a preposition we could also add to it? So we're asking a question. Phoenix? Yeah, maybe buy again. Remember, when we see ablatives from now, especially with relative pronouns, just like by default think by, it might not end up being by, but we should just approach it that way. So like by what or which, what's fine? By what or which, can you this? They actually go together. They're actually the same case, anyone? By what or which, can you this? Yeah, um, it can be origin. I think it's more like kind or, or uh, just the context of the fact that we're asking about it. I think it's gonna be like kind or type. By which type, and then ablative, by which type, um, what? What, uh, do scalarum, sinistorum go together? Did I give it away? I think they do. What case are they, Keaton? What case are both scalarum and sinistrorum? There they are. Good. By which type of uh, sinister evil? So scalaris is, or scalus scalaris, chicken boy tells us it's just like, it's the noun version of evil. We have the adjective malus malum malum since like, like month two of Latin. But scalus scalaris means like evil as a noun or wickedness or like wicked deed. So this is almost redundant, but it's like, because sinister is also, it can be sinister or wicked. So sinister evil, right? It's a little redundant. So by which type of wicked evil, what? I see Eli Dui Kiwitas. I like to see Eli Dui uh, Kiwitas. Maybe that's going to be the what? Anyone? Maybe that's going to be the <coughs> not direct object. Something even more reassuring and simple than that. It's it's gonna be the maybe the you know? don't overthink it. Don't overthink it. What might it be? We saw we have ablative, we have a genitive, maybe it's a maybe that's a subject. Too bad it's not to be in the sentence like it would be in an English sentence. But I see A E A E and I see Excuse me? Yes. Put it on Chloe Hayes to the office. She has an appointment, but she is coming back. Okay, yes. Thank you. Yep. So, so how did I how did I know that it was a subject? Well, Kiwi talk taze is kind of weird because that's third extension. That could be nominative plural or accusative plural. But then, if it's next to things that could only be nominative or genitive, the only thing all three can be is just good old nominative. So that's a little. It's kind of a leap that you have to make, but it, it doesn't take too long to make that leap. I don't. I wouldn't describe it as a leap of logic. It's just like a logic move that you have to perform in order to understand that they're just going to be all nominative together. So something about, uh, how do we translate Eli do I kiwi tates? Anyone? Those two citizens, they, what's going to happen to them? The laetai erunt is going to happen to them. What kind of verb is this when you want? It's the same verb we saw last time. It is a, yes. And as Parker, you're going to say perfect passive. Okay. So two people know that this is a perfect passive verb. So I should have a uh, copy from the um, uh, just to see how it works. So I'm looking at my perfect passes. Again, when you, when you see the verbs in two parts, you know it's going to be one of the bottom half things under perfect, clue perfect, or future perfect. By the way, if you got to copy this, please fix the Fs and the Ps uh, on, on the, the tense label at the top because they got cut off. So I'm looking at this, the bottom half of the boxes there. and. I mean, even without that, I know that this is what person and number. Luke, what person and number is this? I'm sorry? Is it first, second, or third person, Chloe? Yeah, singular or plural, Addy? No, that would just be um, like Air Ritz, or I'm sorry, uh, it'd be. Um, uh, uh, It'd be est, it'd be est. But this is a root, it's third person loop. Plural. So this is going to be happening to those two citizens, right? It agrees with the subject that we think is the subject. So those two citizens, what? What happened to them? They blank, blank, delay top. Look at how we translate the perfect passive. Anyone? What is delay or delay? -ry? It's not delete, but two. So those two citizens, what are my two helping verbs? have been destroyed. destroyed okay those last five words there are just those two citizens have been destroyed and then we add the beginning part of the sentence which is the question which is just like by which type of wicked evil 
have those two citizens been destroyed. So there are a lot of things going on, but once you kind of isolate everything, group everything together, I still want you to do the thing that a teacher you want to do, which is to group words together, right? I'm telling you, I like what I'm telling year one kids right now, which is that when you look at a sentence, you should still be doing the same thing you've always been doing. A, trying to find the subject. B, finding the verb. Sometimes those two steps are the same thing. And then C, grouping words together that go together. Usually that's like a noun phrase where it's like a noun with an adjective buddy. That third step has gotten way more difficult for you guys in the past year or so because we have so many declensions. These don't superficially look like they go together and that makes it hard, but they do. They're actually both pink genitive, possessive of Gennarebus. That's hard, you know, but these kind of look the same. Ibis, Ibis, those were the same. So you should be able to understand those go together. And you should definitely be able to understand that Illi goes with do I, and then it would, would just be a little bit of logic to figure that Kiwi Pates is also going with that. Are you feeling okay about this one? Are y'all less scared of perfect passive verbs? They're not too bad. It's just like have been verbed. Um, yeah, have been verbed, right? See, delay tie even has the same A ending as those two citizens. It's nominative plural. Feminine, apparently. There's no difference between feminine and masculine third declension. That's why no matter what, this would be ES. All right. Okay. Well, three, number seven. I mean, Latin's been hard, right? Y'all like, should see my, my class of four in Latin three, the ninth grade. It's only, you know, they're only three chapters ahead. They're on chapter 23. And it's just like, it's all the way big kid Latin, as in it's just like actual straight up Latin. It's, it's just like unadulterated Cicero and Virgil. But that should like inspire you because you're like, you're basically, you've arrived. You are now like translating like the Latin language. The first 15 chapters or so of the textbook is artificial Latin. It's a lot of artificial Latin that textbook writers wrote. But now we're going to increasingly look at more and more just like, straight up pure, unadulterated Latin. And that should at least motivate you, like, right? Like you're not, you're no longer waiting to arrive at that point where you're just like, it's like real Latin that you're translating. It's kind of exciting. Maybe we're going to say Lucy. I thought you were. I thought I cut you off. Sorry. All right, number seven. You can read number seven real quick. Elena, thank you. Mm -hmm. BH is good. Um, real quick, guys, I meant to put a macron over this O and maybe this A if I didn't. Sorry about that. I guess I'm trying to get y'all ready for the national lab exam, which doesn't even use macrons. But, uh, and also, I don't know, do we have um, uh, beneficum? Uh, it just means kindness or benefit. So, I mean, if you guess what it means, you'd be right. It means benefit. Um, this one's not too bad. But we keep getting these qui qui quad uh, interrogative pronouns and adjectives. And they, they definitely, it's like we're either getting those in a sentence or we're getting a relative uh, clause. So a lot of qui qui quad or quis qui quad. And that can be, uh, it can feel difficult, but hopefully we're just getting more and more used to them. Elena? Awesome, thank you. What'd you get? Really good. Uh, can be without, you said honesty and what else? Kindness, good. Honesty and kindness. And also, if you left one, one thing out, then you're all the way correct. Uh, so, honesty, kindness, and friendship, actually. Yes. Exactly correct. I think you left out in alios. But I don't blame you. I don't like that they had it in alios. I think it's a little extra. Good job. Anybody else want to share? Okay, Elena knows what's up. So, yeah, queen is actually going with mortalis. Now, this is hard. That's why I included the screenshot of the dictionary of mortalis here. Because, like, we got these third declension adjectives where, like, we know third declension always the genitive ends in is, but we're getting used to, like, also a lot of the nominative and then is too. And so when you first see this, you're probably thinking, is qui, like, going with mortalis? As in, is it an interrogative adjective? We're asking about mortals? Or is it not going with mortalis? Mortalis is, like, genitive. It's doing something else. And qui is nominative. The answer is they are both nominative. We and Mortalis are nominative. We are asking about mortals. So, um, yeah, which mortal? Which mortal? Singular. Which mortal? And then skip, skip, skip. Let's skip some of these prepositional phrases. Get to our predicate information. Potest essay. That's pretty easy. That's something we've known how to do since like over a year ago. 
So which mortal, what is protest essay? Elena said it, but someone else needs to say it now. Which mortal pardon, is able to be? Yeah, is able to be, uh, or is able rather, is able, um, well, yeah, able to be because of essay. And then let's go back to our prepositional phrases. We're ready for it now. Is able to be sine without. And real quick, what case are we? We have three of these that, that the person is without. Um, uh, what case are they going to be if they're going sine? Out loud, anyone? Ah, well, it says Lucy and maybe Parker too. So, yeah. Uh, which mortal is able to be without friendship, amicitia, uh, and honesty, probitate, or uprightness? Uprightness sounds weird. And uh, benefit sounds weird here, so kindness is good. And I thought on the slide, Chicken Boy would tell us uh, beneficio means kindness. But um, I put it somewhere. Anyway, so kindness. And then what should we do with in alios? What's in alios? I've already told you the case of alios is accusative. Do y'all remember what alios means? Alios, alia, alia? Huh? We get the word alien and alienate from it. An alien, it, it does not really just mean some, something from space. It means anything that is... Mm, what penis? Kind? Yeah, kind. It means other, basically, or like another. Um, yeah. Does that make sense? Like that's where we get words like alien. Like we don't use this term where we're like illegal aliens. As someone who's like not not a Native American or a person, a citizen, an American citizen. I mean to say, but like a, another person who's like from another country. Um, and yeah, like alien life is like other life that's not. From Earth, not Earthling life. Uh, so, but it's accusative. So, do we say in others? Oh, this is weird. Because we don't translate in as in with accusatives, right? How do we translate in with accusatives? Usually we translate it as Parker Rumor to into, but that doesn't make sense here. So, this is hard. Don't want to know this. And that's why Elena, like, kind of like wisely chose to not worry about this and she just had everything else correct. But, <laughs> Every once in a while, in taking an accusative will be towards, toward others. So I need to, I'm going to write down the PowerPoint so my computer kids can see it too. Because that is, a, I don't think we've ever translated in, um, in plus an accusative equals toward. Plus accusative plus toward or into. Which I guess toward and into are kind of like the same kind of concept. All right, we got about 18 minutes. No, we got like 13 minutes to the, the last two. We can do that. That's fine. Any questions on this one? So this one wasn't too bad. Again, I think y'all are getting like skittish about when, when anytime Kui or uh, Kui by Quad shows up, but it doesn't have to be so bad that you, you, you kind of shut down and, and don't really um, end up with a translation that you're willing to share in class, right? Okay, number eight. Win. Good. Kupiwit. Yes. Okay. Real quick. Typo. Um. Bad job on me. But it's it's just nom. It's not name or name. Whatever that. Would be. Sorry about that. Uh. And then real quick. So this O E diphthong is actually co like boy. So that's koiferot. So I'm away, recoit by rotten on familia, the skater, uh, coupee with. Uh, what'd you get, Alain? This one's not too bad either. Very good. Okay, so there's something, it's not quite just like his, what do you say, uh, he moves it in, into his, oh, that's like almost exactly, we might say his own country, um, and then the other part, was a little loose, but it'd be like for the family desired to depart. So yeah, you're almost exactly correct. Very good. So pater, that's a subject, right? No question that pater is a subject, right? We see the first noun of the sentence, then this nominative, third declension form. That's the subject. Uh, what is its verb, Cora? What is the father going to do? We, we got a lot of verbal noise, but let's just move through that noise until we find our verb. That's what we need. Say it. Just try to say it. 
No, because that, that's Greece. That's Greece. Oh, yeah. Oh, and also this is technically the most of a macron of, of the age right here. Oh, okay. oh. But no, where's the verb? It's a weird verb. I think it was on y'all's vocab quiz that y'all need to make up tomorrow. 17 through 19. Oh, I'm Yeah, didn't you already do that one? You got like half of them. So, no, I'm doing that. Is that yeah, that's the one. Uh, where is the verb? Where's the verb in this one, Chloe? Can you tell? At least the initial verb. Because there's kind of two parts of the sentence, as you can kind of probably tell. And I hopefully gave it away. Addy, what do you think the verb is? No, you're not sure? Even if we don't know this verb, that the ending of it should really like jump out at you and say, hey, I'm a verb, look at me, uh, Bailey. No, well, maybe the um, infinitive, right? And then also we have what, Parker? Yes, I assume Alyssa was going to say that too. Yeah, this is like our main verb. So you really like want to learn how to do this. And y'all are used to this. The subject, and then just like skip, 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 skip. And then we get to our verb. The father had <laughs> begun. So that's actually what tense anyone? Coip erot. Just gave it away by saying Parker. It's blue perfect. You might have just said, what did you say, began or? So begins close, but that would be that'd be coip it. Coip and rock with that blue perfect thing is had begun to move. That's the infinitive. What's the direct object, anyone? What's a direct object here, Chloe? What has an accusative ending? Our accusative endings are on our noun structure, but we have things like a m, u m, e m, a s, o s, e s, long u s. Uh, say over now. This, um, that is accusative. So you're right, it is accusative. But I think there's something before it that's going to be our actual direct object. Remember, accusatives do actually have a couple functions. Elena, pecunium, because that's the first one that could be accused of. We see clearly. So I think that's going to be direct object. So he began to move the money, and then this one's pretty easy from Greece, and then it's not in his country, but in Parker in two, in two, because these are accusative, like Chloe said. So like we were talking about the last slide in is going to be into or toward when it takes an accuse. So into, and not just his uh, fatherland, but his own fatherland is the best way to do that. Because that's that reflexive, possessive, adjective. So into his own fatherland. Now it's just like for, for what? Now we have a new subject, familia, right, clearly. As long as you know how to separate these sentences, the sentence into two parts. For the family. This is a newish verb we have that often clearly takes a, so we have two verbs like that, the sentence. Uh, what tense is QP with? From QPO, QP, right? QPV. It is perfect. So, because the family was. Parker? Yeah, so like wanted, wished, even desired, I'm okay with. I think the book might say wished initially. So, wished to depart. They wanted to depart. Um, I'm from Boston now. <laughs> the family desired to depart. Okay. Uh, any questions? So this one, this one vaguely is maybe the easiest one so far. Why is it easy? We don't have a qui qui quad with a relative pronoun. We're not asking a question. Those have been a little hard. We don't have any ablative that we're having to add like by to without even knowing that we should add it necessarily. And we don't have any perfect passive verbs or any passive verbs at all, right? This is kind of old school. There's still some new grammar in here, but this is kind of like bare bones. We do not have passes. We don't have quick by plot. So enjoy this sentence. If I choose this for the quiz tomorrow, it's because I'm being super nice. Um, but because it doesn't have those things, maybe I would be inclined to not choose it. I'm not sure. I haven't decided yet. I'm going to literally write the quiz in the notes. Okay. Let's do this last one so I can choose. Oh, we got two more? Oh, my. Okay, we got five minutes to do two. Aquibus studium defixi. If it kill them, archium eo tempora neglectum est. Um, how should we translate aquibus? By which, yeah, maybe by which or maybe what? Because the reason maybe not which is because I don't see another ablative right next to it. So we're not like maybe asking about anything else in the sentence. So maybe something like by what? And then what can our subject be? Wait, this is weird. Actually, not what or which. What's another option? Who? Who? Because what, and the reason I think that, the reason I was able to make that leap, where's our verb? Where's our verb? Parker, what's our verb? 
Yeah, neglect them. S. We have another perfect passive verb, okay? And anytime we have a passive verb, regardless of the tense, we are often going to have an ablative of agent or means. I think this is ablative of agent and off with us. So I think it's like by who has, because it's perfect passive, I'm going to use at, I'm going to whip it out already, by who has, what's then what's a subject? We still need a subject. That's actually pretty obvious here. Lucy, what do you think? You know, I might get tripped up and think the thing that is a subject looks like a direct topic, but it's just a subject. It's just a neuter subject. Anyone? Yeah. Oh. Oh. Yeah. definitely overthinking this. Can tell. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just studium. So by who has the, what kind of studium? Difficult. The difficult study archium? Of art, the difficult study of art. Hey, what's important? At this time or that time, been, because we still need a second helping verb for a perfect passive, been neglected. neglected. Yeah. See how that wasn't so bad? Like, it seemed like it was going to be super complicated. And then it just ended up being like, like we had a subject right here. We figured out, like, this is, the quibus is kind of hard, figuring out if it's what or which or who. But y'all see how, like, when I see that something is being neglected, I'll, it's worth maybe asking who it's neglected by, and that's what the quibus is. So there are these, like, various, like, uh, nonlinear, like, logic puzzles we're having to solve when we are dealing with, like, passive verbs and relative pronouns and interrogative pronouns. This is an interrogative pronoun, by the way. But they're not too arduous. Phoenix? So if you like, you have to study how difficult art Difficilium? Oh, you are well. Yeah. No, I think you're right. I think difficilium is is genitive. Oh my gosh, Phoenix is better at Latin than me. Okay, no, you're right, man. Uh, because studium is like second declension neuter, and difficil difficilis uh, is third declension. So it would be like difficil limb with an e in it. Dang. All right. Thank you for saying that. Yes, those are they're different pinks, but they're both genitive. Wow, okay. I typed this up during essay yesterday, so I blame y'all for being kind of noisy for me missing that. Uh, real quick, number 10. I don't know why I'm packing up. We've got like three minutes. Uh, ubi veras ilius actoris clari lecti sunt, auditorius delectate sunt. Guess what, guys? This one's not too bad. We have two perfect passive verbs, but we do not have any quick by quad showing up. I'm going to divide the sentence up here. But what is ubi? It's one of two things. Elena, do you have this? Go ahead. You can do your translation, yeah. Uh, what word yeah, that's almost exactly right. Ubi is not going to be what, though? It's either going to be when, harder? While. Not while. When. when or where. Yeah. So here, I think it's going to be... Do we know? I think it's going to be when. It could probably be either. But anyway, so, um, so when have... This is my verb, y'all probably can't tell, but chicken boy's telling us lego, lego, alexa, lexa means to read or choose. So these actually go together. This is a perfect passive verb, just like this is a perfect passive verb. So where have the subjects of that famous author, y'all forget Claris means famous, but it does, it means famous or renowned or clear. Um, where have the subject of that famous author been read Right, been read because it's like text, it's not gonna be chosen here. It's context, been read. Um, uh, comma, the auditories, what does auditories mean? The listeners. the listeners of the audience have been delighted, yeah, not destroyed. I almost thought it was from Deleo Deleri. So, yeah, when versus oh, I see, I think I was like approaching this like it was a question, it's just when versus that bright author have been have been read. Um, Authors have been delighted. I left out my have. Uh, when verses of that bright author been read. Yeah, that sounds like good grammar. Have been read, not pink. Authors have been delighted. So I'm getting used to the perfect passive thing. It's just have been verb. Not too bad. And then here we don't have an ablative of, uh, of agent or anything. And then Ilias Akhorus Clary are genitive. All right, so what am I going to choose for the, the quiz tomorrow? Maybe I will choose 
I won't choose this one. This one's honestly a little too easy. Well, I, I might choose sin, honestly. It, it'll... Yeah. What, this one? No, this one's pretty... So it's like, the hardest ones are nine, uh, seven, and six, maybe? Don't give us the hardest ones. Yeah, do eight. I actually can't decide. I'm going to decide yeah, in five minutes. One. I'd say <laughs> this one's not too hard. Five and eight. Y'all, y'all want me to pick both of them from this set instead of one from yesterday's set? Um, I'll take five and eight. I'll give two five from this one. one. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. I'll pick two from this set, guys. I'm gonna, for real, guys. I'm gonna pick two from this set. Just study these five sentences. I'm gonna pick both from that since it's the beginning of the year. So, why is, why is, why is, why is, why is, oh, because I just Oh, and you're missing some information. So I left something out. And so you had it. I just guessed. Yeah, really? What do you want me to grade this one? Um, what was the other one? So that? this one's going to be. Oh, it's in here. Okay. That's what I have. That's not actually right, but but so Kerr is the one I left out. Kerr is actually why. Oh yeah, let me stop recording. All right, Internet kids, ignore the typos I made. They're fine. Bye.